Okay, hello, my name is Pina Mefia. I'm a PhD student uh, in bioinformatics. I'm working in the physical biology group at the Goethe University in Frankfurt. And my talk is about uh, how I use Mathematica during my scientific work. So I'm working on um, discovering or investigation of the formation of so-called three-dimensional multicellular spheroids. And therefore I use Mathematica for uh, especially to do image segmentation of 2D and 3D images and also um, analyzing and processing the data and uh, to develop a mathematical model. So good morning everyone, so my name is Bina Matthew, I'm a PhD student in bioinformatics and today and I'm working in the physical biology group at the Goethe University in Frankfurt. So today I'm going to show you how I use Mathematica in my scientific work, which is all about the formation of so-called multicellular uh, three-dimensional spheroids. So the physical, uh, physical biology group where I'm working at is a very heterog heterogeneous group consisting of biologists, chemists, physicists, mathematicians, and bioinformaticians. So we combine cell and development biology and 2D and also 3D time-lapse microscopy, data processing, and mathematical modeling. So we always start with a, a scientific challenge or a scientific question and pass through a circular flow where we um, where we um, develop methods, where we do experiments, where we acquire data, for example, image data with our microscopes, where we process and analyze, analyze those data, and we end up with a model. Then this flow starts again by reconsideration of the previous results. Therefore, I use a Mathematica on a daily, um, yeah, uh, my parts uh, kind of are uh, the processing and analyzing of image data and the development of a mathematical model of a specific biological process. Therefore, I use Mathematica on a daily basis and this since about one year. And since I'm not the only one in my group using Mathematica, we all also pro uh, our group also provides introductory and advanced Mathematica courses. Okay, so first I want to give you a short uh, or brief introduction into multicellular three-dimensional spheroids. So spheroids are spherical and uh, consist of multiple cells uh, arranged in a three-dimensional setting. So um, it's just simply a ball consisting of cells. So uh, here we see an image of a spheroid uh, consisting of a breast cancer cell. So these green um, dots are the cells and within each cell there is a cell nuclei which is depicted here in red. These uh, spheroids are formed by the spontaneous aggregation of isolated cells and to observe the formation of spheroids, so the aggregation of those cells, single cells were put into such convex well where the spheroids uh, form at the bottom of that well. So here I did a little animation with Mathematica where we can see the spheroid formation in the bottom, at the bottom of the well. So we first start with single cells and they then cluster into different, to multiple clusters and then come closer and more closer together and forming the final spheroid, which you can see here. Okay, uh, spheroids can be used to understand uh, cancer metastasis. Uh, cancer metastasis uh, in, uh, means that the spread of cancer cells within the body. Um, so this is why it's uh, especially spheroid formation and spheroids plays an important role in that cancer metastasis. In the example of ovarian cancer, as you see here, um, uh, ovarian cancer metastasis, and if you have here the ovary, single cells shed from the primary tumor and aggregates as uh, spheroids. And these spheroids are more resistant uh, against chemotherapeutical drugs than single cells. So uh, these uh, spheroids can then travel within the body without being harmed of any drugs uh, and can build secondary tumor sites at other locations. So that's why it's important to investigate this spheroid formation. So the first thing we did was to observe the spheroid formation in 2D, so in two dimension. Therefore, uh, we uh, imaged the spheroid formation with the conventional wide field microscope and therefore the cell nuclei were um, fluorescently tagged, so that means when we put the cells under the microscope, they kind of glow in the dark. So here we have an example. Um, I make it small. An example of a 2D live image. So in the left side, you see a so-called transmission image where we see the whole the cell as a whole. And on the right side, you see the fluorescence image uh, with the tagged cell nuclei. So we observed this formation for about 60 hours. 
hours, and uh, we see uh, yeah, we see single cells coming closer and closer together and forming this spheroid. Okay, so having these images, uh, the next step is uh, yeah to process and analyze those image data, and especially to obtain the positions uh, to extract features, and especially to obtain the positions of the cell nuclei, detect cell nuclei. Therefore, we combined. Uh, Mathematica built in uh, image processing and image segmentation uh, functions into a 2D cell nuclei segmentation pipeline. So the goal of segmentation in general is to uh, change the representation of an image in such a way that the image is uh, more easy to analyze. So therefore we developed a um, graphical interface uh, where the main structure is a tab view. And um, yeah, a tab view in the first tab we can import images like uh, the fluorescence image, <coughs> I do that quite here, and here in the middle part we can um, yeah, uh, say which segmentation method should be used. So with a pop-up menu, so we say, okay, how should the features, in that case the cell nuclei, should be extracted. Then I can say, okay, process that whole time lapse, and then uh, this method, this segmentation method is applied on each image in that 2D time lapse. Then here I can also import uh, like the transmission image with is uh, just for visualization purposes later on. So here in the middle part we can uh, specify, specify some parameters. <coughs> for example, the maximum distance between two cells. So this is um, uh, important for bond calculation. So assuming a bond between two cells give more information about associated cells and cell cluster. So if we then click, um, calculate bonds, we get a visualization, and we have to wait a little bit, and yeah. Then we have another uh, tab view, so I make it bigger, we can do it with these check boxes, and these orange circles, you can see that, and these orange circles are overlaid on top, uh, I make it smaller again, sorry, uh, are, uh, are overlaid on top on the detected uh, cell nuclei, and the red lines are uh, indicating the bonds, so the connection between two cells which have a certain distance. So the nice thing here is that we can uh, manually correct uh, the result, the segmentation, so we can add and remove circles, and we also can shift them. So if I say, okay, here's a cell nuclei as well, or here I can put it, I can just click on it, or I can remove it, uh, remove it if I say it's just dirt or it's wrongly detected, or, or I can shift it somewhere else. So I can do that, uh, this is done with the event handler, so this event, with the function event handler, so this uh, specifies what happened if I, for example, click the mouse or use these shortcuts. So this can then be saved, uh, the changes can be saved, and then all, exp this all, the all information can be exported into an Excel file, where all this um, yeah, information is stored. Okay, and what I forgot, uh, this uh, segmentation was done for all time uh, points, so uh, this is wrapped around with the manipulate, we can go through all the time points. Okay, um, yeah. since the, uh, uh, since spheroids are three-dimensional, we also perform 3D live imaging, so therefore we imaged uh, the spheroids under our 3D microscope. So um, here we see, uh, I'll show you raw data, how it comes out from the microscope, and we can, it's easily, it can be easily imported into Mathematica, and since version nine, it can be visualized with image 3D. So here we see the uh, spirit, how it comes out from the microscope. Here the bright spots, the bright uh, yeah, grayish spots are the tagged cell nuclei, which have a certain intensity. So also here in that step, it is the crucial step to validate those image data, and this is done also by, uh, or, and um, yeah, has to be done the cell nuclei segmentation, and this time in uh, 3D instead of 2D. So, um, therefore we used uh, the intensity, uh, yeah, using this intensity of the tag cell nuclei, we tried uh, intensity-based segmentation, so we used different Mathematica function, built-in function, in order to, uh, yeah, to extract the feature by intensity-based segmentation, and we always ended up uh, with a result like this. So this is the spheroid uh, after the, after the intensity-based segmentation, and here different color correspond to different cell nuclei. So I make it bigger, and if I now rotate the whole thing, we can see here, especially in the back, that the uh, cell nuclei are clustered, so that objects are clustered. So I can show you that in a better way when I take out single objects from that spheroid, 
I can show you that in that grid. So as, uh, remember, different colors corresponds to different uh, cell nuclei, and here we see this is considered to be one, but we can see it's, it's um, yeah, it's rather three. Okay, so the problem is that objects are clustered, and just by using the intensity, it's not possible to like um, split or um, yeah. Uh, yeah, split those uh, objects. So therefore, to tackle that problem, we um, developed uh, three-dimensional segmentation methods for cell nuclei, which takes those uh, clustered objects and decompose those objects into multiple convex objects. So um, here, this uh, algorithm takes into account the convexity of the cell nuclei rather than the intensity. So our criteria is shape, not intensity. The basic concept for this are so-called lines, line of sides. So here we have a, a line between a pair of surface points. Here, if you have, when we have a look here, the line between a set pair of surface points, if that line does not leave the inner volume of the shape, like in this case, these lines are considered to be in line of sides. And if this does leave the inner volume of the shape, like for example here, uh, this is not a, these lines are non, in, not in line of sides. So the theory behind it is that two surface points or any click or points that are in line of sights are said to be in a convex position. So we then implemented the whole um, idea with Mathematica. So I, I just make that smaller. Uh, so uh, the algorithm takes a clustered object, in that case, it cl clustered nuclei, and performs several steps in order to decompose the object into multiple convex objects. So here we see the overview, and the next part I, uh, <coughs> I will explain the functions which I used uh, in order to achieve, uh, yeah, to do each of that step. So starting with the surface points. So the first step was to uh, determine the surface points. I, before I forget, here on the left, we always see the, um, the result of the current tab, and on the right, I just overlaying it with that object. So the first step, um, is to determine the surface point. This is done with the function morphological parameter, which simply calculates the parameter of the binarized object. Then I, determine, I then use pixel value position to get the positions of that parameter values, a uh, parameter. So then we have the surface points and I have to calculate the pair of lines between each surface points. So this is simply done with a function permutation. Then I end up with uh, something like this. And since I'm just interested in the lines, which does not leave the inner volume of the uh, shape, I have to distinguish between the lost lines and the ones which are non, not in line of sides. So this I'm doing in the net next step. Um, <coughs> I'm doing that with the function B spline function. For that, an uh, interpolation line is calculated between each pair of uh, surface points. And with pixel value, I then check for each uh, point of that interpolated line, which, which uh, what is the pixel value for each uh, point of that line. And if that value is a value of the background, then I know, okay, this line is leaving this inner volume. And if this pixel value has the pixel value of the object, so of the foreground, then I know, okay, it's still in my object. So, so I can distinguish between lost lines and not lost lines. I then use these lines uh, to cluster them. Therefore, I use the function find cluster, clusters. Uh, so the clustering treats pairs of lost lines as being less um, similar if their chessboard distance is too large. So that simply means if two lines are too far from away from each other, then they're not in one cluster. So we see again a different color uh, means uh, different clusters, and all the lost lines are um, yeah, I have a label concern uh, according to their cluster. The next step is then to <coughs> label the surface points. So we have here the uh, la lines which were clustered. Now we have to lab uh, label, and now we have to label the surface points um, with help of the loss clustering in the previous loss clustering. And therefore, each surface point <coughs> is clustered or labeled according to the uh, most commonest outgoing uh, loss lines with the label which it has. So, so that I, that's the way how I um, label the surface points. That for that I take ordering and commonest in most cases. So now I have the labels for my uh, my surface point, and this looks quite good. Three different colors looks looks nice. So the last step to do is then to um, label all the rest of the object pixel, and this is just done by the nearest. <coughs> by the most common label in the neighborhood, and this is achieved with the function nearest and commonest. So here on the left, we have uh, 
the object before this loss splitting and on the right you see the uh, object after the splitting. So remember, different color means different cell nuclei and this looks yeah, quite reasonable. So here are more examples. So on the left again, um, the objects before splitting and in the right, the objects after splitting. So here, for example, here we have big clustered objects and they are splitted pretty nicely. Okay, then the last step to do is then to take all the single objects which were um, splitted and then to reassemble then to reassemble it uh, into uh, the final spheroid again. So now if we have a look, now again different color means different cell nuclei and when we go now to the back, you see it's like more reasonable than doing it with the intensity based segmentation. Okay. Then we used um, Mathematica function in order to analyze and visualize the, uh, how good this uh, segmentation method works. Therefore, uh, we wrote a validation pipeline um, where we compare an ideal case, the ground truth data set, where we extracted the cell positions of the cell nuclear manually with the initial sec with the intensity based segmentation, so where the cell nucleus were still clustered, and with the loss uh, segmentation. So here we get out a grid where we see uh, where the results are nicely visualized. Here, for example, I simply used a graphic 3D to plot those spheres which should re represent the cell nuclei. And uh, down here, for example, I used a number of, uh, I plotted the number of cells with a bar chart to see, okay, what are the, what is the number of detected cells in my ground truth and my initial segmentation and the loss segmentation. And this is also done with a, with a bar chart with the bar chart where I put the little, yeah, bar origin on the left. So the same for here and down here, for example, I used, um, oh, I don't get it today. I used um, pie chart 3D in order to show in yellow, uh, in pink, the uh, cell nuclei which were correctly uh, detected and in yellow, and in yellow, the ones which are wrongly or not correctly detected. So from left to right, you see an improvement. So that means that this algorithm works pretty nice on that uh, cell nuclei. Okay, the last thing uh, is having these, uh, having this image data, which I processed and analyzed. Uh, I then, uh, oh, then created or yeah, de developed a mathematical model for this process called spheroid formation. So now I show you one ordinary differential equation, equation out of this, this mathematical model and this equation describes the size reduction during this uh, whole formation, so when the cells come closer together. So this is the, uh, the equation for the size reduction over time. So I won't go into much detail um, concerning that um, equation. I just want to show uh, how I use Mathematica to plot that that equation to solve how I solve that equation and how I fit that equation. So here I simply uh, yeah, plot that equation by using simply plot and here um, and ins inserted some uh, like 2D graphics and 3D graphics to visualize it more better. So here the size is reduced with a speed which decreases the closer the cells come. This I want to show with that inset and uh, therefore I used epilog. Okay, the next step was to solve the equation. <coughs> Therefore, I used desol the function desolve. Therefore, I just plugged in the equation and desolve then uh, calculates uh, the function uh, for a of t of the function a of t with the independent variable t. So here I then plotted the solution with a simply plot and next to it I uh, just uh, visualize the solution of the uh, solution of that equation, as also the equation itself. So then I wrap the whole thing around a manu manipulate so I can um, easily change uh, the parameter values and this gives me a nice first in, uh, impression how the uh, solution of my equation looks like and how it uh, gives me like hints for the spirit formation. So this is manipulate is yeah, pretty useful for that. Okay, the last step, I did a fitting of the experimental data, so from the image data, and fitted them to uh, the equation and visualized them. For that, uh, we wrote a function which um, does this fitting and the visualization in one step, so this is the code for it. And down here we have the data, and here we call that function by simply just plug in the data and the equation, and then we get immediately like a nice visualization 
of uh, how the fitting works, how the residuals, uh, what are the, my parameters for that fitting, so we can see that nicely. And we can also um, choose uh, which uh, properties should be shown in that visualization by, for example, using uh, defining some options where we can define default properties. And um, these, these properties are then read out with the option value function and can then be used within that function. It's pretty useful. So the, for the actual fitting, I use nonlinear fit. And yeah, down here we just see like stylings of that visualization of that grid and of that plots. So yeah, with that, um, I coming to my yeah, summary. So today I uh, showed you how I use Mathematica in my daily scientific work. So I can use Mathematica to do like image segmentation and feature extraction. In my case, the extraction of the positions of the cell nuclei and this in 2D and 3D. I can do image data analysis and plotting. Gen yeah. And I solve differential equations for my, mathematical, for my mathematical model and fit them to my experimental data. I um, can create graphical interfaces to make the life easier for, for example, colleagues. You can just use this interface and import some data and do the segmentation on the data. I can do nice, nice visualization, especially in 3D, using like image 3D or graphic 3D. Okay, yeah, with that, um, I want to uh, thank, uh, I'll make it a little smaller. I want to thank my group, the physical biology group, especially uh, Ernst Stelzer and my colleagues Alexander Schmitz and Sabine Fischer. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>